We keep seeing these bunkers everywhere. There's one right at the end of the street here. There's a really interesting story about how they all came to be and how they're just literally scattered all over the entire country. I don't know about this. Wow. <laughs> this is the first time we've done anything or been anywhere like this. This is probably the first little strip that we walked through. It's like a walking street with these overarching trees and everything. That was the first place that probably made us realize how, how cool this area is. When we first decided that we wanted to come to Albania, the thing that probably drew us the most was the Albanian Riviera, which from what we have seen, it's hard to find information on. It's absolutely beautiful, yeah. isn't it? It looks a lot like Greece. Yeah, it's not traveled as much. Albania as a country has no. not traveled as much, but we just knew that we wanted to come here anyway. We knew that we, we needed to get some work done. So we decided to base ourselves in um, Tirana for a few weeks at least. And it was also the place that we could find some information on. It was easy to find an apartment Yeah, here. decent accommodation for sure. <laughs> um, but then we went on a food tour, which was our first video, which hopefully you've yeah, seen Yeah, I hope you've right seen now. that one, yeah. And then we were like, whoa, this city is really, really interesting and not what we expected. It's very cool as yeah. well. And it's got rough around the edges, but there's a lot of really interesting stories and a really, yeah, a good vibe that we like to find. So we're absolutely stoked. Yeah, we got a lot of story time today. <laughs> Buckle up, because it's going to be good. <laughs> it just felt right to start. Well, we didn't start the vlog here, but, to, <laughs> this, but for this to be our first stop. First destination. This is called Skanderbeg Square, and it's kind of, it's the heart of Tirana. It's the, like, the main meeting point of the city. It is huge. It's 40,000 square meters. It is, yeah. Probably one of the biggest central squares we've ever walked into. I think so. And it's, uh, there's, it's surrounded by all, like, the top sites. So there's museums, there's a mosque right in front of us, there's a clock tower. The rooftop bar that I can see. <laughs> the rooftop, rooftop bar. There's also a monument. Uh, to the person that or the national hero that the square was named after. It's it's so big that the thing that's surprising me the most is that it's just flat and there's just there is nothing in the middle of it. Yeah. Like, I feel like some of the bigger European squares we've seen there's there's restaurants in there yeah. or it's sort of like this doesn't feel like it's been commercialized in that sense. No, it's just vast. It's like a mirage. It's also, it is a bit of a mirage. It's like shiny in a way because it is so hot. It's so hot today. I think it's supposed to get up to like 33 degrees or something. I think we have to go get like an iced coffee or something, cool down and share a couple of stories actually that we've got, which, which we found really fascinating. supposed to come out of there. I think this is what made us think it was a mirage. Yeah, because I was like, it looks like water. It's legit water coming out of the ground for no reason. And it's not flat either. There is this like little mound in the middle and everything. But you, you scratch everything we just Yeah, forget you. everything except for the really important details. Oh, and I just tripped. This is off to a perfect start. Anyway, have a look at the big square. It is enormous. Everyone's in like, everyone's in very much like work mode, I think. There's, a, there's definitely a few tourists here, but um, it feels like everybody's just going about their daily life and this just happens to be a place that they pass through. So we decided to get uh, takeaway coffees instead. They were full when we bought them. <laughs> they do Fredo. They do Fredo cappuccinos here, which is very. We want to say Greek, but someone will probably be like, uh, "Actually, that's Albanian and Greece stolen." But <laughs> who knows? They're amazing and cheap. So cheap. How much was it? Four hundred and sixty lek. Now it was about fifty percent of the cost that we paid in some of the more expensive places in Greece. Sadly, the no plastic movement hasn't quite made it here and neither has the non-smoking thing. So you go into a cafe or you sit outside at a cafe and the smoke, you're literally just, I was sitting there, it was literally It's like being a hot box and you're outside. Of smoke, which we don't really enjoy. So we got takeaway and... You can stare, share a little story here. Yeah, so what we wanted to share was our guide from our food tour was telling us all these stories about local people here. And one that we found really interesting was that we asked like, why are there so many nice cars here? There's literally Mercedes. What was that one we saw earlier? Maserati, it's yeah. insane. And she was saying that there's a real culture here of like trying to look the part. So people have all these really nice cars. And I'm not saying this, is, this applies to everybody, but there's like the general stereotype is like they have these cars, but they maybe struggle to have the money to fill them up. Yeah, it's this real facade, isn't it? Yeah, and the other thing was, um, going out at night so if you want to go to a nightclub or a bar or whatever it's common here to 
go and get your hair and makeup professionally done, have all the brand new clothes and just, just yeah, for, really just, go for Just it. for a night out. It's and, crazy. And, and apparently they don't dance either. Albanians no don't dancing. dance. They just like stand around and just probably just smoke and look beautiful. <laughs> and like, it still sounds like fun. Oh. That's some insight into uh, life being an Albanian. You know, have some of their inside jokes, but... Um, the next thing we want to do is go and scope out these, um, we keep seeing these bunkers everywhere. There's one right at the end of the street here. There's a really interesting story about how they all came to be and how they're just literally scattered all over the entire country. But before we do that, I have noticed they do actually have plastic recycling, so maybe they're not so good on the plastic front, but at least they try and make an effort here anyway. It is so random. This is so random. We're just walking through a square and there's just a bunker right here. But I feel like it's probably, we need to explain a little bit about yeah, yeah. Like, why this is here. So basically, I mean, communism is obviously a huge part of Albania's history, sadly. Uh, so when the dictator, when he was in power, he was so paranoid, he started to build all of these bunkers all over the city. And this country. is one of them. Oh, sorry, all, the all over the country. and. This one here has been converted into a museum, which you can actually go inside, go underground, and I guess see some art, see some history. Yeah. I don't really know what to expect when we're in there. <laughs> so he actually built, which planned to build 750,000. Nobody really knows how many he actually got to. It's expected, it's about 200,000 is the rumors, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. About 200,000. So we're gonna see them as we drive around Albania when we do a road trip as well. But this one's called Banka 2, and you just go down in. I don't know about this. Wow. <laughs> this is the first time we've done anything or been anywhere like this. This is the anti anti nuclear bunker for the Ministry of Internal Affairs. And this is creepy. creepy. It's instantly creepy. Wow. Oh my god. It does feel very like grim in here. I mean, understandably so. It was literally like a nuclear bunker preparing for Albania being invaded, which it never was, which is why everyone says that it was just um, paranoia. But the funny thing is, would it have been perceived as paranoia if they actually did? get attacked and all of a sudden everybody in Albania had a bunker that they could go to keep safe. Are you safe if you're just sitting in the bunker? No, you're, <laughs> sitting, you're probably a sitting duck, but this is really, really interesting. Time traveled. Wow. Look at this computer. One of the first computers used in the Albanian Ministry of Internal Affairs. We really thought that this was going to be a small bunker that had some history about the bunkers themselves, but this is literally like Albania's history. Everything from war and propaganda and spying and hidden, um, uh, what were they hidden? Like listening devices and uh, yeah, prisoner camps and some very like, yeah, some quite horrific stuff, which obviously we won't, we won't show, we won't go into too much. Just, this just keeps getting more and more creepy. What's like, I kind of feel like I'm in a horror movie a little bit. Keep going. Oh, wow. Eek. Wow, that was maybe a little bit more grim than I think we had anticipated. That was a little bit shocking, but I'm glad that we did it to find out about the history mm. and yeah. If you come to Tirana, you totally should do it. We won't, if you're not interested in that, we won't pull you down into it. But when we were in that room, we really thought that we had found 
all of the like nastiness but then it went into torture and all sorts of crazy yeah, stuff which it got worse. we don't need to go into no. so if you know us if you've been following for a while you know that beer and pizza are the two things that kind of bring us happiness bring us happiness so we've <laughs> sort of come to cheer ourselves up a little bit we're trying the local well a, a local albanian beer called Korcha? Korcha, and it is delicious i don't know if it's the heat or what but it is going down a treat so we wanted to do like our plan this morning was to show off how cool and colorful and arty and like vibrant tirana is and then we went literally went down a hole <laughs> So now we're trying to try and turn things around a little bit. The other thing that we love about Albania, keeping things on a positive note now, that was 1,000 lek for four beers. We got a little bit carried away. <laughs> four beers and a pizza for a thousand in like a pretty like a restaurant scene. We've just walked through this street. If you've seen our food video, you would have known that this is probably the first little strip that we walked through. It's like a walking street with these overarching trees and everything. That was the first place that probably made us realize how how cool this area is how like unique it is compared to what we thought it was and it adds like it adds a lot of contrast to what we were probably expecting and what we were seeing around which is a lot of the older buildings which ties over quite nicely to the next stop that we're going to because I mentioned in that food video about the art and the color and everything of the city there's a really cool story or well, story time we'll call it about how that sort of all came to be and why some of these buildings have been repainted and are so colorful and there's probably a really good example right there actually i feel like i've been hinting all day and talking about like the art and this positivity through color and everything and we've only now finally got to a point where i can talk about the most famous one the gate just ends here. There's a whole bunch of like security guards to my left. I wonder if we... Where do we just go? I vote that I don't know what these guys behind us are doing. I mean, you hold a camera up like this and people look at you anyway. I mean, I read online that you can still go in, so I think we go in. Well, you can't... In, in this bit, you mean? Or like, like in... No, Because you no, can't go inside. You can't go <laughs> inside. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Dane just instantly started giggling because he saw something that brought back childhood memories. Childhood memories for sure. Duff. Duff. From The Simpsons. So by the time you're watching this, we might already be at 100,000 subs, which is absolutely huge. And we promise we will do a specific video where we sort of talk about that or some sort of a celebration anyway. But we're just humbled by the support and also humbled by those of you guys that support us on Patreon as well. So we just want to take a quick minute to thank Liam for joining our Patreon and supporting us there as well as on these videos. So thank you very much.